Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today for creating digital and accessible math for all learners. Uh, my name is Matt Brown, and I'm the Territory Sales Director here at Textalp. Um, I sent in the chat a link to the slide deck if anyone would like to uh, view that and any resources. And also, uh, this is a short link for uh, the slide deck as well, which will bring you right to uh, what I'm presenting now. So again, my name is Matt Brown. I'm the Territory Sales Director here at Textalp uh, for Canada. Here is my Twitter handle and my email. So if anyone does have any questions, feel free to uh, either throw them in the chat box, but if I'm not able to get to all of them, I'm more than happy uh, to answer them via email, to shoot me an email and I can answer them as best as I can. Um, throughout the presentation, I'm going to try to stop maybe every 20 minutes or so and check to see if there's any questions. Um, but for now, uh, I'm going to get going. So if you do have questions, just throw them right in the chat box. Here are some resources for Equatio. Uh, Equatio is a Chrome web store, uh, is in the Chrome web store. We have a YouTube page with all of the different tools here, interactive toolbar, quick reference guides, a prediction list, and, uh, also read and write for Google Chrome. So read and write for Google Chrome will read the math out loud. Um, so if you would like to have that, uh, you can feel free to add that from the Chrome Web Store as well. And just a little background, TextHelp is our company. Um, we've been around since about 1996. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with our flagship program, Read and Write. Uh, Equatio is a little bit new of a program, probably three or four years old. Um, and that is what we're going to be covering today. So Equatio is our digital uh, math and STEM editor. Okay, so for the agenda today, what I'm going to do is uh, cover what is Equatio, how you can access and install it. Um, I'll do a demo of the toolbar and the math space environment, which is basically a digital whiteboard. Um, and I'll answer any questions as well. So at the end, I'll probably leave five or 10 minutes for questions. But if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to throw them, uh, feel free to throw them into the chat box. Okay, so to disrupt uh, how math is both taught and learned. So basically what we mean by this is we want Equatio um, to be able to help students re, um, consume and uh, create math digitally. Right now, math is pretty much, it's been taught the same way for many, many years. And it's basically a teacher teaching in the front of the room. Students are writing down uh, the equations and a teacher may have been using a chalkboard back in the day. And that's kind of progressed obviously to smart boards and other software or other environments. But still students are typically using pencil and paper to write down notes and everything like that. So what we wanna do is we wanna create an easy way for students to um, take in math, create math in multiple different uh, areas. So if they, and provide accessible math. So if they want to use prediction, uh, if they want to use speech to text, um, all of these tools that are considered maybe, or were considered uh, assistive technology tools back in the day um, are becoming a lot more mainstream. So if you think about if you're writing on your phone and you use dictation, that used to be a special education support. Or if you're using uh, word prediction on your phone, um, that used to be a special education support, but now it's available for everyone on their cell phones. And as much as it bugs me uh, on the cell phones when my dad uses the dictation and doesn't speak clearly, um, it's still a great thing for him because he has trouble seeing the screen and everything like that. So it's more of a universal support. It's not something that just uh, one or two, two students need. It's something that can help. Um, it's essential for some, but beneficial for all. So what is Equatio? It's basically an easy to use math and STEM editor. You don't have to know any math coding late, um, languages like LaTeX. Um, it's simple, it, you can use prediction, you can use speech to math, uh, handwriting recognition. Uh, we're providing multiple different options for students to create and consume math. Um, it's built on universal design for learning principles. Like I mentioned before, you have all of those different option, input options that you can use. And we also have that digital whiteboard that I mentioned before, um, if you wanted to create more digital or more visual math. 
And then also it integrates seamlessly with read and write one of our other programs. So if you want to read the math out loud, we basically insert the math as uh, an image. So because we insert it as an image, we can put alt text uh, behind that image so it will read it out loud correctly. Typically with um, other equation editors, uh, math is always pretty difficult. You can't really read it out loud correctly. Like if you put x squared, it might read it as uh, x2. So we automatically put that uh, behind the math. You don't have to worry about it and it's accessible. So we have five different uh, platforms for Equatio. So we have uh, Equatio for Google, which is a Google Chrome extension. You can use Equatio for Office 365. Um, that's also the Google Chrome extension. You just sign in differently. And then we have Equatio for desktop, which is locally installed to the computer and Equatio Math Space, which is uh, the digital whiteboard that I mentioned, and then also Equatio for LMS. So today what we're gonna be mainly focusing on is Equatio for Google, the Google Chrome extension, and also Equatio Math Space. Okay, so how to access uh, Equatio? All you would have to do is one, make sure you're logged into the Chrome browser um, and you have access to, um, log into the Chrome browser and make sure that your account is synced. Um, and you can simply just type in Chrome, the colon slash last settings slash, and it should bring you right there and make sure that you're signed in properly. Once you're signed in, uh, you would also wanna make sure that Chrome is up to date. I wouldn't do that right now because it might kick you out of the meeting, but um, after the meeting, you can do that. And then all you would have to do is download Equatio from the Chrome web store. So that link. So if you type in Chrome web store and search text help or Equatio, it should populate right there and you can add it to Chrome. Seems like there might be some technical uh, difficulties. Bear with me one second. Can everyone hear me now?
So it seems like the stream is not going, I'm trying to work and get someone here to help out. I'm Matthew. Hello. Hey, Christopher, for some reason they can't uh, hear or see me. Okay. Let's try again. I see the stream is turned off. It was enabled when I left last. All right. Can you hear us now? Check, 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 test. Hello. Yes, we are on. Okay. Sorry, Matthew. I think you're live now. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, if you just want to okay perfect so let me see let me kind of keep going so we're going over equatio for google chrome um to access equatio uh all you would have to do is make sure you're logged into the chrome browser uh with your institution google credentials uh equatio is turned on for everyone um within nova scotia department of ed so uh, all you would have to do is make sure you're signed in correctly chrome settings um chrome is up to date and then you can just download Equatio from the Chrome Web Store. I would wait to um, update Chrome and everything just because it might kick you out of the meeting. Uh, but let's keep going here. All right, so what we're going to do is get into uh, the details. And just to show everyone really quick, because I went over this before, but no one could hear me, um, Equatio is a Google Chrome extension. Uh, it can, it, it's basically a math in STEM editor. So uh, we have an install-based version, uh, a Google Chrome extension, uh, MathSpace, and Equatio for LMS. Today, what we're going to be covering is Equatio for Google Chrome and Equatio MathSpace. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to um, go into a Google Doc. So you can see Equatio is loaded here. Um, to load Equatio, all you have to do is click on that little button once you have it installed. And hopefully, everyone can see my screen OK. Uh, all I'm going to do is just cover the options real quick. So um, what we have here in options, you have, I can, you can see that my account is premium. Under math options, you can change the math font size. So this is how math is going to be inserted into the Google Doc. Um, so if you want it extra large, and I'm going to keep it large for now so everyone can see it on uh, my screen. Uh, but you can also change it to small, regular, large, extra large, or extra, extra large. So I'll keep it at extra large here. We're fully localized in these languages right here. 
Uh, Canada is probably the most similar to the United Kingdom, so you can choose United Kingdom if you would like, but we're localized in uh, French, Spanish, and Italian, and more locally, localizations are currently being worked on now. And then under predictions. So this is basically if you um, are a math teacher and you didn't want to predict chemistry formulas because there's a lot of chemistry formulas, uh, you can toggle that off if you would like. I believe when you first install it, um, all of them are automatically toggled on. So I have all these toggled on for now for the um, demo. And then you can also customize the toolbar. So if you wanted, let's say, if you wanted to turn off prediction, you can turn off prediction or any of the other tools here as well. All you do is simply click here and toggle off, or you can toggle it on. You can also adjust the speed of um, the screenshot reader. So the screenshot reader will basically, you can draw a box around any math and it will read it out loud. So if it's reading a little bit too fast, you can slow that down a little bit. Okay, so let's get right into the program. What I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna hover over here and go into the equation editor. So the equation editor is our math prediction. So once I click on this, you can see I have some options over here. So you can insert text, um, you can change the color of text or the math, you can put things in your favorites, um, you can remove everything from the screen. So if I start typing, you can just simply delete everything and press the clear button. Uh, what we also have is a palette-based editor here. So if you wanted the symbols, so this is helpful if, if a, lo a lot of you are, might be familiar with using the palette-based editors, you can find certain symbols uh, right in here or um, the layout. So you can change the layout if you wanted to do some matrices or whatnot. And then formulas are all right here and you can search formulas and then you can also add things to your favorites. So I'm just gonna start typing right now. And what I'm gonna do is just show you um, a simple fraction, right? So what we try to do is make it very easy for students to write math, students or teachers. And with, within a Google Doc right now, it, it's not super easy. You have to go into insert, and then you have to go into equation, and then you have to start typing and figure out what you want for symbols. It's not very user-friendly. And quite frankly, for me, it's a little bit confusing. So we want to simplify this process. Let me just delete this real quick. And let's say I want to do a fraction and I don't know how to do a fraction. I can just start typing fraction. So FR, and you can see it will populate with prediction right here. And once I click on fraction, it's going to automatically put it into the numerator where I can go to, and then I can arrow down or click in that empty box and put in three for a fraction. What you could also do is you could do two over, and want to automatically put into a fraction. I could do two out of. I could do uh, start typing two thirds. So all of these different ways you can write uh, a fraction. You don't have to know how to write the math before you, you start writing it. You can simply go in there and edit it too if you would like to. So if I want to change that two to a one, I can just arrow up and press delete and then press one. And then I can clear it if I would like to as well. And let's say I wanted to do something maybe um, like 3x squared. I can just start typing 3x and then sq, and it's going to predict squared right there for me. If I wanted to change it from squared, I could also do, let's say, um, to the power. You can see it's starting to type it right there, to the power, and it would automatically put a blank one there. So if I wanted a cubed root, or I could simply just type in cubed right here. So again, all we're trying to do is provide multiple different ways for students to write down the math and uh, make it a lot easier for students. Now that's some things in the prediction. We also have formulas in the prediction. So if I wanted to do like point uh, float form right here, you can see I just typed in POI. And then if I click here, it will automatically populate with that formula right here. If I wanted to do, let's say, area of a triangle or area of a circle, all right here will automatically populate right into the box. And again, if you want to change the color of something, let's say I want to change the color of one half, I can simply click here and go into text color. And you would see I can change that text color right there. 
Now let's try inserting some math. So I'll just do 3x squared really quick. Whoops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it into this Google Doc. And hopefully you can see that right there. And again, we insert this as an image. So what we automatically will do, if I right click on this, I can go into the alt text and you will see that it says 3x squared right there. Now, if I wanted to, I could also come along and use read and write and read it out loud, right? So 3x squared. Hopefully everyone could hear that on their end. Perfect. All righty. So within prediction, I can also do a couple other things. And I'll stick here for a couple seconds. But let's say I wanted to do something that might be a little bit more complicated, like the quadratic formula. So if I do the quadratic formula, you can see it automatically populates. And this is something when I was in school, I always had trouble with this because I would write something down wrong and make a little, little mistakes, like um, copying mistakes. So if I was writing down the formula, if I miss something, then the whole equation is wrong. So something like this, I can insert this into the equation if I was the teacher. And then what the student could do, and let me just delete this right there. If the student goes in here, if they clicked on this image and they have Equatio open, all they would have to do is go into edit math and it would bring it right back into here. So if I want to, I could then, okay, let's say B was maybe two. And maybe A, oh, here, two. We can start working down. And what I can do is I can press enter to go into um, the next line and start writing math again and go step by step. Or I could do control shift uh, enter and it would automatically copy that down to the next line for me, as you can see here. One thing I forgot to mention is you have more room if you would like more room to use the equation editor. So if you can see here, right in the middle, I can go down or up. So if I wanted more room, you could do that here. And let me just show you how this plays uh, right here. I'll do the quadratic formula. I'll play it out loud. X equals the fraction with the numerator negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC and denominator 2A. So what this is doing is it's providing accessible math. It can be read aloud by screen readers, um, but it also helps cement the learning. Maybe students might not know what a certain symbol is. Maybe they get confused with a squared root and a squared. This is something that they, they can easily uh, read it back aloud and cement that learning for them. And then also we have some chemistry things in here as well. So if I want to do like, um, Carl's law or chloric acid, all this stuff right here. And maybe if I want to do like a reacts um, right here, you can do arrows if you would like as well. So you have all of these options right here. So not only just math, you can also do science and STEM stuff as well. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show within prediction is some of our matrices. So if I want to do a, an addition vertical, um, if I wanted a two digit vertical or a three digit vertical, um, I can click right here. And it's automatically gonna populate this with blank squares where I can then start solving uh, the math for me. So this is all built in right in there. You don't have to do anything. Um, once you have that, you can insert it right into the document. And if a student wanted to, they can click on it, edit the math and then start filling it out. All right, so let's move on to the next tool. Um, and I'm just gonna populate that quadratic formula again, uh, the LaTeX. Now this is something you don't have to know how to use. Um, if you do know how to use it, great, because all of those keyboard shortcuts uh, do work within the prediction menu. Um, but this is what this problem would look like in LaTeX. So you can see here, this is how you would have to type, it's like a, a different math language. But that being said, so if you know that um, the caret to go, let's say here, if I knew the arrow up and goes into the exponent in two, great. All those keyboard shortcuts work. So if you wanted to learn how to use it, great, you can do that. But you don't have to learn or know how to use it to use it. So not spending a lot of time on that. I'm going to go over into uh, handwriting recognition right now. So 
handwriting recognition. If you have touchscreen devices, this is great. So if I click here, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. You don't have to have a touchscreen device. You can use your uh, mouse and trackpad, but I find using touchscreen, it's a lot easier. So if I did, let's say three X squared, you can see over here on the right, it will automatically generate that for me. And maybe I didn't want to do squared. Maybe I wanted it cubed. I can simply just scribble this out like so, and then do a three here and it will automatically populate that for me. Or if I want to make this into a fraction, I could simply do this. So again, something that's handwriting goes into this math. And if you inserted it into the document, it will automatically insert with that alt text as well. And if I go into here and go into the alt text, you'll be able to see that alt text right here. All right, so that's the handwriting recognition. We also have speech input. So if I wanted to do something like x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0, and what it will also do is we'll try to filter out all the non-math terms. So you can see over here, I wrote down everything that I was saying. And you can see when you're saying stuff, some stuff recognizes math, but I can simply just go over here and delete this. But um, something I can take from speech and it will go right into math right here and you can enter it into uh, the document as well. And if I want to, I could also do um, prediction over here. So if I wanted to change some things, I can simply highlight it and make it into a fraction. So the prediction also works in this menu as well. All right. So, um, I will cover, um, let's go over the Equatio mobile feature. So this is something that's very interesting. So if you have students, and again, this is a UDL approach. So if you have students that like to do the handwriting instead of doing uh, digital math, what you can do is let's say you had um, a problem that was in a Google doc and the student had to enter it, uh, but they liked to handwrite it uh, within the paper and pencil. If I click on this little Equatio mobile uh, screen right here, I can simply open a camera on my phone and what it will do is it will go to that QR code. So if you open the camera on your phone, it will go to the QR code. And I'm just gonna show you really quick. I'm gonna take a picture of some math that I have written down and I'm gonna enter it just as an image. I'm not gonna um, convert it into math, but just so you can see, because I know uh, this one's a little bit difficult to uh, demo, but you're gonna see an image populate right into the document. So this is a picture I just took of my notebook with math. And excuse my terrible handwriting, but um, what I'm going to do is instead of enter entering it as a picture, you also have the option of entering it as math. And when you enter it as math, what it will do is we'll do an OCR conversion of that math. And once I press enter, you're going to see right here, it entered that math. So basically, this image, this handwriting, even though how terrible it was, it did pretty good as far as recognizing that math. And not only that, again, if you go into that alt text, this is now accessible. It will read it out loud. And I can just do a little demonstration of that just so you can hear it on your end. Equatio image, three lines, line one, x squared minus four x plus four line two, Open for an x minus 2 close to n squared equals 0 line 3, x equals 2. Awesome. So hopefully everyone could hear that on their end again. Okay. What I'm going to also show is our um, graphing tool, graph editor. Now, this is something that's powered by Desmos. So uh, we license Desmos out. And you can see here, if I click on it, it's powered by Desmos. And I can simply go into, let's say, x equals, uh, I don't know, three. You can see I have that there. Um, I have the graph. Um, or what I can also do is if I wanted to do like 3x squared, you also have the prediction on this side as well. So 3x squared. right here. You can also add variables like I added the A. And if I press play, 
what this will do is it will automatically um, kind of go on what that variable will do if it's uh, negative or a positive. So when I was in school many years ago, uh, we used TI-89 calculators or 84, I forget which ones they are, but you would have to type them in all the time and it might take days for you to um, for you to write out the equations and figure out what happens when it's a negative or a positive. This is something you can do almost instantly. So students can see it. Okay, this is what happens. They can actually even scroll instead of pressing play. You can actually scroll to different points and see what it does uh, when it's a negative or a positive and changing it. And I can also just insert this graph right into that Google Doc. And if you click on the graph and go to edit, it will go right back to that Google Doc or right back to that Desmos graph. OK, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And let's see here what you can also do. So maybe something with maybe uh, lower grades. I'm going to show you this math space option right here. And this is something that's super powerful. And there's two ways to use this. So if I was in a Google Doc like I am now, and I'm just deleting some of those equations that I have. But if I'm in a Google Doc and I went to, want to answer, uh, enter some um, visuals, I can go into this insert math space. And again, there is two options for this. So if I go into the equation um, math space, this is the first option. You can see here, this little icon here is insert. So this means it's inserting into the document where you accessed it. Uh, you have all of these shapes that you can use right here. So we have coins, we have uh, tangrams, we have cones, counting rods, uh, 10 frame groups. So if I want to, I could simply go like this. And what I can do is I can simply just click on this button right here and it will go right into that Google Doc for me. And then all a student would have to do is click on this and go to edit math and it will bring them right to right back to that um, that place. And if I want to, I can start moving things around and I'm just going to do this pretty quickly. But once I go back and I insert this back in as the student, it's automatically going to update that image for me. So I see one question was um, show one uh, quadrant of the graph for elementary. So let me go into um, the second option. So the first option is accessing math space from the toolbar right here. But what you can also do is you can go into this equatio option right here and then try equatio math space. And the difference between this option right here and the other one, this brings you to a dashboard where you can um, create all these cool uh, math spaces and assign them to students and they can answer them and it's all within the dashboard right here. So let's say I was just going to go to a new space. I think uh, one of the questions was one quadrant. So you can actually zoom in in Desmos and you can use one quadrant and you can also change. So if I wanted to do this, I could do that and then enter it and we'll enter, enter it just like this. Or we also have options for Let's see here. Fraction bars, circles, I believe there's um, coordinate planes, arrows. So I think you would just adjust the settings within the graph here. So if you want to change those, you can go into this little tool setting here and you can change the axis, the Y axis and um, what you want shown there. So that might be an easier way to do it for the elementary students. Uh, but what you could also do, uh, let's see here, X out of here back into here. You could also simply just draw a line if you wanted to and then another line like this if you want to just create a quick one. All right, bear with me one second. OK, so like I mentioned before, you have all these different options. So you have coins. So you have Canadian coins. If I want to throw these out here, we have um, all these in the shapes. And you also have all those tools that I was using before. So you have that prediction, the graphing, uh, the handwriting recognition, the speech to text, cell phone capability. 
Um, and these are all the differences here. So you have the coins, you have the tanagrams, counting rods, um, pattern blocks. So if I want to throw some pattern blocks out there, you just click and drag. And then um, all of these things right here. So maybe some counting rods I can throw out. Whoops. I released it a little bit too early. Some counting rods. And then we also have some sciencey things. And then you also have some Venn diagrams, algebra tiles, and then all these switches right here. And then we also have some cars, some trains, some text helpers, uh, people skiing, pulleys, all of these different options. And then you also have coordinate planes, fraction bars. So all within here. Now, what you can also do, let's say I wanted to uh, click on one of these. I can also um, set the infinite cloner. I can lock certain things all over here. And then what you can do is you can also change the label. So you can make them, if you want to have this say something else, except for quarter, you can have it say something else. All you have to do is edit it there. Um, but you can put on the infinite cloner. You can see here that the copy one, you as the educator can still move it around, but once you share it with the student, the student won't be, or the student will, um, be able to infinite clone it, or if you locked it, so if I click on lock, you can still move it around, but the student wouldn't be able to move it around. Now, so these are the ones under shapes. We also have smart shapes, and the difference between the shapes and the smart shapes is you can adjust these. So we have the coordinate plane here. Um, we have some number lines, fraction bars, whatever it may be. But if I click on this and put this into the document, you're going to see over here, I have some options over here. And this is why they're called smart shapes because I can adjust these. So if I wanted segments, if I wanted to increase those, I can increase the number of segments. I can start at one or start at zero. You can have one step or two steps. So you can adjust these and that is the smart shapes. So the smart shapes you can adjust throughout uh, if you would like to. So if I want to do this, I can add some more segments in here. I could change the color if I wanted to. Let's say I wanted a different color. I could do, let's say a blue. So these are completely uh, customizable and it will read it out loud correctly as well. Now within this math space, you're gonna notice I don't have that insert it into the document. The difference here is I can share it. So instead I can make a copy for each person. And this option is good if you want to share a math space with another teacher. It's basically like making a copy of a document within Google. What I'm gonna do here is make a copy for each person and expect a response. So this is what you would do for students. You can press continue and it's going to create a new link where you can throw it right into the classroom. And let's just pretend I'm the student. I locate that link. I press enter. On the student view, what they would receive is that same math space. The difference is they only have an option to submit that problem. So um, if they filled this out or if they added something in or if they solved the equation, whatever it may, I'm just gonna add a circle really quick. But once I share it back with the teacher, I'm good to go. And then as a teacher, let's go back to that dashboard. So under um, assignments, you're gonna see here, I have one assignment here and one student answered it. You can see that little blue thing. And then you can see also um, the submitted and you can send some feedback for the student. Once I click in here, uh, you'll see a little um, pane over on the right side where you can give a score give some feedback all within here, and then you can send it right to the student. So within here, accessing Equatio from uh, the toolbar over here, under here, you can see that you have that whole workflow where you can assign things to students. Um, and the other option was doing it. So if you wanted to just send something into a Google Doc, you access it right from that Google Doc. Okay, so I'm gonna stop real quick. Does anyone have any questions? I know there's like a 10 second delay, so it might take me a second just to see the questions. But if you do, uh, feel free to type them in the chat box. If not, I'll just continue going. All right, I'm going to continue going. If I see a question, I'll try to answer it throughout the presentation. Okay, so. Next thing is uh, what I could also do, we can actually use read and write in conjunction with Equatio if you would like to. So if I want to do, let's say, um, 
x squared, right, minus 4x plus 4. And I wanted to enter it into here. And let's say I was a teacher and I gave this problem to a student. The student, what they could do is they could actually click on here and they can use read and write to um, how they're going to attack this problem to kind of describe their thinking. How often uh, does it happen where students raise their hand, they say, I don't know how to do this problem. What they can actually do is you can say, okay, try the voice note, explain it. Because usually when they're right there and you ask them questions, they actually know how to solve the problem. And then once you leave, they have no idea what they said. Um, so what you could actually do here is click on that equation. I can use the voice note feature within read and write. And then as a student, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do to attack this problem. I'm going to minus four from each side, et cetera. I'm gonna just keep it short and sweet and press stop. And once I insert, I can play it back. And then I can also insert it into the document. So what it will do is it will act just like a Google comment would. It will put it right on the side and you can press play. So if you ask the student, how, do you, how are you gonna solve this problem? Have the voice note playing and then they go through their process. They can save it and put it right there. So they're not gonna raise their hand again and ask you uh, right when you walk away. But you can see here, once I press play, it's four from each side, et cetera. I'm gonna just... And then if I'm all set with this, I can simply just click on the check mark and it will go right back into the comments up here. All right, so moving on here. Let's say I had a PDF, um, if I had an image, we also have a screenshot reader. So if I click on the Equatio icon again right here on the web, I could take a screenshot of math. So if I wanted, let's say, this one right here. I can grab and draw a box around it. It's going to read it out loud for me, do an OCR scan. The fraction with numerator z minus negative 10 and denominator negative 7 equals negative 3. And what I can do here is I can click on those three dots. I can edit with Equatio. I can copy the LaTeX. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the LaTeX, go right over here, and then I'm just going to paste it in here. Control V. You can see something uh, right from um, a PDF or, or whatnot. I can simply just take a, a screenshot of it and then put it right into here as well. So once I enter that, that's going to become accessible. You can read it out loud. You can also use it within Google Forms. So if I want to go into a Google Form, you can see I have these little Equatio icons right here, and I can write um, some problems for students. So if I wanted to, I could do, let's say like solve for X. And I can open Equatio. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and if I insert it, we'll go right into, um, right into here for me. And I have some preset ones. Students can also respond with Equatio if they have it installed. Um, and all you have to do is click on this little um, icon right here. So I have ones that are already created just so you can see what you can do. Uh, so simplify the expression, solve for X. So if you just wanted like a quick warm up, send it to students, have them respond. Uh, this might be a quick, easy uh, warm up for them. And you can also see the responses if there's any entered. If you want to do it with geometry, you can do uh, math space. So if I want to throw math spaces in here, I could. You could do handwriting recognition. So there's a lot of different um, options you can choose. And just so you can see a math space option, um, what I'll do is I'll just add a new one and then go to here. If I go into math space, I'll just go to... Um, I'm just going to put something random in there. Press insert, and what it will do is it will automatically populate within that Google form for you. So you can see that image. So if you want to throw images in there, you can do it with mass space, um, or you can use uh, Equatio to answer that. So I think we have like 13 minutes left. Any questions so far? I'll stop for a second. Um, if not, I'll just keep going.
questions yet. Okay. So what you could also do, let's say I have like a YouTube video um, and I wanted to grab math off a YouTube video. I could simply click here on the Equatio icon. I could use that screenshot reader just like I did with that PDF. I wanted to grab this. So this is handwritten. I can simply draw a box around this and you're going to see it's going to do that OCR scan for me again. It's going to read it out loud. Three lines, line one, open for an X plus. I'm going to stop the reading from it, but I can copy that LaTeX. And again, I can just bring it straight into Equatio. And you can see it's right there, and I can enter it right into the equation. What we also have here are some STEM tools. So if I delete this, we have a periodic table for students. So if I clicked on, let's say, um, hydrogen, I can see here, once I click on it, um, gives me a little description. Uh, I can add it to my equation editor. So it gives you the atomic number, everything right here. So if I add it to the equation editor, what it will do is we'll just put it right into here for me. Let's say I wanted to do something, maybe um, magnesium, add to the equation editor. So you can add them right there from this periodic table. You also have options. So periodic table, if I wanted to, I could also have a scientific calculator, which is powered by Desmos right here for you. And then we also have a molecular viewer. So if I click on the molecular viewer, you can see here, um, I have this option. If I start typing, it will also do prediction for me. So if I want to do, um, click on that, you can see the molecule. I can move this around if I would like to. You have options over here. So if you want to zoom out or if you want to zoom in more, and move it around. So we have that molecular viewer. You can also change the views as well. So lines, um, stick, whatever it may be. So that option is there. And I did see uh, there was a question for the OCR. So with the screenshot reader, and let me just answer this real quick. So if I go into here, all I'm doing, so to start the OCR, all I do is click on the Equatio icon right here and this Basically, this tool right here, the screenshot reader, acts as a screenshot reader like in, in read and write or whatnot. It does the OCR scan for you. All you have to do is click on the screenshot reader and then click and drag around what you want OCR scanned. And once you release that, um, once you release the click, it will automatically OCR scan it. It does its magic and it will automatically read it out loud for you. Three as well. lines, line one. I'm going to stop it. But to get that into Equatio, all I would have to do is click on these three dots right here. And it looks like it's a little bit more difficult to see on, on the attendee view. But there's three dots here. And if I click on it, I can copy that LaTeX and then paste it into another environment, let's say the Google Doc. Or I can edit with Equatio if you wanted to put it right into the Equatio editor from here. But I'll copy the LaTeX and just bring it right over here. So once I use that, it reads it out loud. I can just control V. That's automatically OCR scanned. You don't have to do anything other than selecting the screenshot reader tool and then selecting the text that you want to be screenshotted. And when you enter it into the document, you can see that it will automatically have that alt text for it right here. Hopefully that answered that question. If not, feel free again to um, uh, send another uh, question in the chat box or shoot me an email, happy to help out. All right, so we used most of that stuff within the Google Doc. We have the math space. Uh, let's click out of here. Showed in the Google form. Also works in PDFs. Um, I think we have about eight minutes left. So what I do want to show real quick is just to show you some of these resources that we have available within here. So if I go back up to here, hopefully a lot of you can uh, see this, but so Chrome web store listing, YouTube playlist, those are short little individual videos of all the tools. Um, so a great little resource right there, interactive toolbar. So what this will do basically is this is just a, it's a link to, um, all the tools and it will, once you click on it once you click on the arrow it will use text-to-speech to read it out loud equation editor 
The editor allowed. And we'll read it out loud for you. So this is just a quick little interactive toolbar. And then we also have those quick reference guides. And the quick reference guide for the Equatio toolbar is just that simply that toolbar that we're using within Google Docs. You can see all of these right here. And then the difference between this one and the quick reference guide in mass base is that digital whiteboard, as you can see here. And then we also have a prediction list. So this thing, this is something that might be super helpful. So if you don't know how to do something, um, write something down. We have all these prediction items for the math. So you have right here and you can search. So if you scroll down, you can see what they are. So those are all the math prediction items. We have all the formulas right here and we have a ton of different formulas in here that are automatically built in. So if you have any trouble figuring out how to do something, this might be a great area. So if you want to look for a formula. All the formulas that we have are built right into here. We have all the math uh, built into here. We have all our chemistry terms and stuff right in here. And then we have all our uh, speech input commands right here. All right, I'm gonna stop real quick. Any questions so far? I don't believe there are. We have about five minutes left. So if anyone's having trouble installing or has more questions or wants me to show something again, feel free to let me know. I'm more than happy to um, show something again. Or, or... Great question. So is there a way to save? Uh, the question is, is there a way to save what we create using uh, the math space before inserting it into a document? So if you want to edit it, if you need to. So let's say you're in a math space document right here. If what I would do, so this, I don't know if this would like time out or whatnot, but let's say I built something and I like have a square and maybe I wanted to throw some, I don't know, um, a Venn diagram, whatever it may be, right? So if I was a student and I wanted to save this, I didn't want to throw it into the document yet. I believe, I think the best, probably the best option would be to enter it into the document but you can go back later and adjust it. So if I was here, you can see it's in the document, but what the student can do is they can simply click on this and then go into edit and they can edit it and change anything that they have right there. So if I wanted to add something or if I wanted to delete this, once I enter this back into the document, and you can see I'm gonna remove that rectangle, it's going to automatically replace that image before for me. Hopefully that answered the question. If you're in math space here, we do have options. So if I wanted to save a math space, I do want to show some of the math spaces I have. So here's one of them that was created by a teacher in Ontario. And this one, this is awesome for younger grades. It's just a pizza diagram. So you can see, um, you have the pepperonis, you have the pizzas, mushrooms. So this is just a creative way of creating something different and for providing visual supports for it. And they can share it around if they would like to, but you can see the pepperoni mushrooms and they just slide them onto the pizza. So this is an awesome thing, but you do have a save button up here. So save right here. So if a student was doing something, they could save it and then they could access it simply um, under their assignments. Um, some other ones are, so let's say a copy of a first grade remote learning assignment. So this is something that our product manager's uh, son got as a remote learning uh, project. Um, so it's basically a PDF, uh, kind of boring. So what our product manager decided to do is turn this into a, an Equatio math space. So you can see here the first problem and you can do multiple pages here. So one thing I did not mention. It seems like it's just taking a second to load. You can see here, they wrote them out. They put some visuals within here. So you have all these different options here to make it a more visual thing instead of just having a PDF. Um, if you wanted to, this is a sixth grade remote learning environment example. So this is something, again, our product manager created for his daughter. Um, and you can see here, 
uh, just providing a little bit more visual things and, and providing colors. And, and you can see when I scroll down a little bit, there's some of them that they had no idea what to, how to respond to them because there was no visuals there. So providing some visuals helped uh, his daughter and she was able to answer them. So you can see here, it's just a PDF. Oh, and it looks like my internet is going wonky right now. Okay, so we have two minutes left. I'm gonna stop. Um, and if anyone has questions, let me just pull up my deck again, my contact information. So again, if anyone does have any questions afterwards, you can contact me anytime. This is my email. I'm more than happy to help out any way I can. If you wanted a, a demo or you had questions, and you wanted me to join a meeting, just shoot me an email. Happy to join anytime I can. We can set up a time and, and kind of review everything in more detail.